Well, we've talked a lot about strange things over the past year, from murder hornets to the mysterious monoliths. Well, there's also been a rise in sightings of UFOs during the pandemic. Joining us now with more is York University's Paul Delaney. Paul, great to talk to you today. Um, Good morning, Ben. All right, let's jump right in. In Canada alone, there were more than 1,200 sightings in 2020. That's a nearly 50% increase from the year before. Why are people seeing more UFOs? Well, I would suggest to you that it's right up there with why there's been a 100% increase in the purchase of telescopes. People are spending a lot more time at home and looking at the night sky because, gosh, they haven't got a whole lot of other things to do. <laughs> All right, it could be as simple as a numbers game. But for, for the most part, UFO sightings are explainable. T tell us what they usually turn out to be. Well, UFOs, of course, unidentified flying objects become IFOs, identified flying objects, about 95% of the time. Generally speaking, they come down to simple things like orbiting satellites, debris falling through the atmosphere, heating up and you know, becoming incandescent as they burn up on re-entry. Even planets Venus and Jupiter are often big culprits with respect to sighting because they are bright objects when they're very low to the horizon, they sneak in and around trees and houses as you move. They don't, but they, <laughs> you know, you're moving. So it's the simple things. When people sit down and sort of write out the available information and pass it along to astronomers, 95% of the time, we figure it out. Okay, what happens the other 5% of the time when a UFO remains you? Right, exactly. Well, you know, an unidentified flying object is just that. It's unidentified. The, the problem is, and science fiction hasn't helped this, people <laughs> immediately equate UFO to flying saucers with aliens. Well, just because I can't identify what a moving point of light is doesn't mean that it is an extraterrestrial spacecraft. Let's look at the number of drones that are in our skies these days. Over the last 10 years, you, know, you and I have been able to go down to you know, your favorite box store and pick up a drone, which can be outfitted with a lot of LEDs, and they are very quiet if they're more than about 100 feet, you know, 30, 40 meters away from you. So there are lots of easy sources of lights moving in our sky. Very distant aircraft, which you can't hear, still are points of light, and you know, if they've got their landing lights on, they, of course, attract attention. And our good friends in the military, I have no doubt that they are experimenting with all sorts of atmospheric aircraft, and they don't necessarily want to tell us all about it. So the U can remain a U, but it doesn't mean that the UFO is a flying saucer with extraterrestrials. Uh, Paul, for a great many people, government silence is proof that there is a cover-up. But at the end of June, U.S. intelligence agencies are going to be delivering a report on unidentified aerial phenomena to U.S. Congress. Uh, this is going to be interesting. A lot of people are going to be paying attention. What can you tell us about this report? Very, very little. And I, like you and everybody else, will be interested to see what is actually released. But again, I'm a little skeptical that you know, the truth will come out. Uh, you, you gave a, um, a contact reference earlier. Uh, and I'm going to give you an equivalent one from Carl Sagan. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Until I'm actually holding a piece of a flying saucer <laughs> that doesn't have terrestrial markings on it, I will remain very sceptical that any report telling us about what these points of light are in the sky are actually extraterrestrial. I'm much more of the view that there will be a terrestrial result, a terrestrial uh, explanation for those missing 5% of the UFOs. All right, Paul, I, I've got one last question, but I have a feeling I know the answer here. As our resident space expert and somebody who has spent more time looking at the night sky than most, have you ever seen a UFO? I have. I have seen one unidentified flying object that was about 40 years ago while I was observing. It was a point of light that moved in the sky that I could not account for. So, yes, I have seen okay. the UFO. So, yes, but, but, but you're one of those, uh, those experts that we would then pass that on to and it would then get explained. Are you part of the 95%? Of, the, of, of UFOs that are explained away or part of the 5% uh, for which there is no explanation? I would care to bet that I am part of the 95% 
when I made this observation, I was very young and I did not note it with all the necessary parameters. And I literally just said, oh, well, that's interesting and continued observing. <laughs> it, it didn't occur to me at that point in time that I was looking at a flying saucer. And I still don't believe it was, but I can't tell you what it was. But that was that was back then. And now I would write it down with a whole lot more information and be a lot more diligent about that report. Paul, thank you so much for joining us. And when those U.S. intelligence agencies do deliver their report uh, to the U.S. Congress, we hope that you come back and break it down for us. We'll chat. Absolutely. All right. All the best. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.